Hello and welcome, Pocket Watch here, and it's about time to read some more of Umineko. So yeah, last episode was pretty weird, as you already saw. And now we are going with Maria perspective, I believe. That's where we ended last time. I've read your comments. It, like, this is like pretty good points you had, like the first part of the epitaph may be irrelevant uh, at all, it may be just metaphorical, like Johnny just started already, or it just, like you, uh, you know, like someone already found the key and we just don't know it. So yeah, that's pretty good points, so yeah, thank you for your comments and I hope to talk with you even more, like, under this episode. So yeah, let's go with Maria's story. I hope my microphone isn't too loud. <clears throat> I have lately problems with making proper, like, you know, um, height of the microphone. Oh well, whatever. Let's just go. <clears throat> Maria left Cousin's room, trying to head to the room that had been arranged for her and her mother. Paying no heed to the three who were sleeping sound soundly, she slammed the door shut. In response, Butler mumped and rolled over in his sleep, but it wasn't enough to wake him up. After a while, Maria returned, once again opening a door with a lively bang. You can't fight your mother. I wonder what happened with these this people. Are they actually dead? <coughs> also, yeah, now I think about this. How Rudolf predicted that he may die. Did he believe... Did he just believe that Epitaph is true and... Just assume this is high probability that he will die or something? Probably, probably yes. Or maybe it was him who found the key. Oh well, we'll see. Yeah, I talked way too much and read a little, a little of story. <laughs> Sorry, I just sometimes have a lot to talk about. When she had left the room, her face had been sleepy, but now that she was back, she looks irritated. After that, she climbed up the butler bed, which happened to be the closest and start yelling and jumping on it like it was a trampoline. Okay, looks like she's happy. This is like terrible. <laughs> she's trying to assassinate you. After making sure I was awake, Maria moved off the to George Aniki bed and started jumping on that too. <laughs> Perfect waking up solution. In that manner, the three of us were all greeted with an extremely present awakening. Thank <laughs> Yeah, you would probably say, like, uh, just five minutes more. Do you have also problems with, like, waking up? I have my, um, alarm clock set, like, one hour before I have to go to work. And I have ten minutes intervals between each, like, clock, you know? <laughs> Because I'm like 10 minutes more, 10 minutes more, and then I'm going to work like at the last moment. George <laughs> Also, I love sleeping. Like, 
sleeping is like fantastic thing to do. <laughs> or just lying in the bed at the morning. Ah. I miss weekends. I mean, yeah. Like, we have still like three days to weekends, so yeah. So you were not happy, so why your voice was so happy before? You're such confusing character, Maria! Your voice doesn't make sense sometimes. Mara kept groaning ooh, ooh, and looking unhappy. She didn't exactly seem lonely because her mother wasn't around. It was more like she was irritated and thrown off balance because her mother wasn't where she would expect it. Yeah, exactly like with the rose. I think... Yeah, I still think like... Maria is character that... Uh, you know... Blah, blah, blah. Sorry, I lost my thought. I said like in one of the previous episodes that Maria may have sl some like mental problems, you know, uh, illness, something like that. Maybe, maybe she is character based on that. Maybe she have like, you know, some illness and this is why she behaves like that. If you could just tell her where her mother was, that alone would probably calm her down. But unfortunately, we had no way of knowing where Aunt Rosa was, except that she wasn't here. Because Maria is 13 years old, I believe. I don't think uh, normal 13 years old would cry and stuff about like, you know, Rosa not being there and her mother not being in the place where she's supposed to be. It was like, where she is? And they were just like, hey, let's find her. Yeah, and that will be it for like normal kid, I believe. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Huh. Maria, Okay, I think I came to wrong conclusions, maybe. Okay, I'm not I have to like stop making theories about I don't know, I think about Maria. Yeah, let's just assume that she's like normal normal kid. But kinda possessed. And weird. Okay, I have no uh, yeah, I'm talking way too much. This story have like 50 plus hours of gameplay and, and I'm talking about random stuff. What the fuck? Oh. This is going to be a long episode, I believe. So, that's it. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the Maria regained her usual composure so completely, her earlier tantrum now seems like a lie. We got dressed, left the room and headed for the mansion. Once more, there was a knocking sound on the study door. Oh yeah, Natsuhi going to Kinzo. But there was no answer. He, he, he seems to be sleeping still and I could not wake him up. If she went back downstairs and said something like that, Eva would probably be amused and triumphant. And even putting Eva aside, it was problematic that Kinzo had stayed shut away during this entire once a year conference. Not even coming down to greet everyone. Even the family head, no, especially the family head, couldn't fail to make apprentice appearance. Sorry. I wonder if I can convince him myself. I don't think so. 
Natsuki radiated her radiated, yeah, herself and used the key that she would borrowed from Genji to open the door. Why is she be attacked or something? You know, basically she have no permission to be there. Even though she was prepared for the sweet stench, which seems to eat into the one's brain as it poured out the small crack in the door, she couldn't help but grimace. What does it mean? Wait. Grimace. Let me just google it, okay? Um, grimace. Oh, disgust or pain. Comic exaggeration. Okay. That makes sense. Also, yeah, I'm recording, okay. Thinking that he might still be sleeping, not so he entered the room quietly. When she did, Kinzo was already awake and looking down out the window. <laughs> He is not happy. Kinzo spoke with his back still facing her. His voice was not harsh, but calm, and not so he was slightly reassured. Calm voice usually means the worst things, so yeah. However though, he was awake. He wouldn't have ignored all that knocking if he was in a good mood. Not so he wasn't able to relax. Yeah, Genji will be in problem, probably. Like, in trap. Or maybe not? Okay, Kinzo took it way better than I thought. I think, like, at this point, we can just tell that Kinzo and Genji. Just maybe not each other, maybe does. But Kinzo trust Genji with his life. I would say, even with his life, I would say that because this room is so freaking important for him and stuff, and he just accepted that Genji decided, "Hey, you go to Genji's room. I mean Kinzo's room. Here, have a key." And Kinzo just, oh, okay, Genji decided that, then I think that's that must be important. So basically, if he would like, uh, who he don't like most, uh, probably Maria. If he would let Maria go in, he would probably be like, what the fuck, Genji? But okay, I guess. Shiki. This is wrong topic. Shiki, yeah, do, don't push your luck. Basically, yeah. Pakarashi. His last words carried the threat that any further questions would be not appreciated. Natsuki realized that adding any further pleas would finally bring his wrath down upon her. She didn't look uh, forward to facing Eva's sarcasm, but there was nothing more Natsuki could do. So this that's why he decided to give up. Bowing silently, she tried to leave the room before Kinzo 
spasmodic temper could flare up. But it went better than I thought, but still bad. As she did, Kinza spoke to her. His voice was so calm and gentle, it felt like it came from an entirely different person. もう随分になるな。はい。オッケー、this really. I think this is wrong one answer for Kinzo. I think so. I kinda want to know how was her old family. She truly wasn't exaggerating. Such was the resolve she felt when she applied to Ushiromiya family name to herself. And that's precisely why she was so saddened when her husband didn't treat her like an Ushiromiya, leaving her to race about in vain. That would be better, right? Natsuki was shocked. If Kinzo was just now, were what they seemed. Yeah, he see he like looks at you and thinks that you should be a head family probably. It would have been more than enough to make up for all she would suffer up to this point. Kinzo was again faced away from her. He would told her to forget it, but Sansuki couldn't help feeling a warmth in her heart. This is amazing episode already I did not expect that turn of events yeah Wow, Kinzo is making points in my ranking in this in this episode. Wow. Holy shit. You don't see it because this is not a reaction video, so I don't have camera right now, but maybe I should. I have a little bit of tears. This is... This is like beautiful... Change of character for Kinzo. I mean, that means that he was always like that, but we didn't knew at this point. I love this episode. This is... Okay, he's like, he's going into like, I don't know, top 5 or maybe top 3 of my favorite characters now. His, his personality is much deeper than I thought. I thought like he was totally different person, but looks like he have other side of him as well. 
yeah, he was. Well, we're kind of hinted about this this side of his personality. Like he always talked about everyone being not worthy of, you know, inheritance. Like they were um, just vultures trying to, you know, discuss uh, how to take the wealth and uh, didn't care about anything. So probably that's what he meant, like the true meaning of the family. Maybe that's what he wanted. I don't know how Epitaph will come into this, but yeah, he, he's just giving us a lesson of, of the family, basically. Like, you have family in heart. This is not a crest. Without saying anything more, Kinzo remained with his back to Natsuhi. However, Natsuhi couldn't help but felt something warm well up inside her that she had, hadn't felt since long ago. She had been just a child. Natsuhi bowed silently to his back and left the room. Yeah, good timing, Eva. Natsuhi just got armor plus 10 against Eva Towns. When Natsuhi left the study, she saw Eva climbing the stairs and their eyes met. Eva was smirking unpleasantly, thinking that Natsuhi would leave droodlingly. Oh my god, another word that I have no idea what the hell is this and how to read this. Drood... Drudge Kingly. Drood Kingly. Sorry. Uh, what does it mean? Impulse. Did use unpleasant. Okay. Makes sense. After failing to convince Kinzo. However, the way Natsuhi was now, such a f frivolous laugh would not disrupt her, as I said, plus 10 to armor. She was not permitted to wear, or maybe not armor, more like resistance. She was not permitted to wear the family crest on her clothing, but she was permitted to wear it in her heart. So she spoke calmly, clearly and confidently with the dignity of the one who would protect the Ushiremiya family glory. お父様は親族会議には<笑> I see that too. Natsuhi did not answer. Cor correct decision. Just as Kinzo had done earlier, she showed Eva her back as she headed down the stairs. Eva finally realized that she was being made fun of, that something had happened too quickly bolstered Natsuhi's confidence. Even so, she apparently didn't have the courage to risk kicking the wrath. Unable to even knock the door, she could only click her tongue, making a motion as through scratching at it and follow after Natsuhi. So, so then, Wow. Just wow. This is 
this episode is... I don't... I don't even know how I should, like, name this episode. Maybe changes? Beautiful episode? Beautiful change? Unexpected? There's so many emotions in this... in this one. Okay, Nat Natsuhi... Natsuhi Kinzo, you going up in ranks. Eva is confused as hell. Eva couldn't hide her confusion at the complete difference in Natsuhi's attitude. She was acting so boldly, boldly, and while Eva hated to admit it, she even had a sense of dignity about her. <laughs> Unable to find fault with anything, Eva could only follow Natsuhi back to the parlor. When the two of them returned to the parlor, Hideyoshi had been joined by the four children and Nanjo. Genji, who had been talking with Hideyoshi, reported the current situation when he noticed that Natsuki had returned. Yeah, like I said in the last episode, this is... Yeah, Kumasawa can make a proper breakfast, probably. The clock read a little past eight. Eight should be, should have been the time that started breakfast. Normally, going over that time limit would be a disgrace to the host. Okay, finally recognizing that Shannon is nowhere to be found. Just how many people had gone missing by now? Now that the number was this large, it was starting to feel truly unpleasant, as though the people here were the only ones being left out of something interesting. At least, that seems to reflect the feelings of the children, and Maria in particular. She was indignant, her stomach grumbling, almost as... as though... Wait, what? As though her mother and the others had left her alone to go off and eat something delicious without her. Okay, I'm sorry about this sentence. I don't know why, but that was really confusing for me to read. The other children were flipping through the channels on the television, trying to find a program that might interest Maria and cheer her up again. Nanja was sitting on the sofa, Gazing blissfully at the children while reading a book. It must have been a book about chess. The sound of footsteps came rushing towards them with a pitter patter. Um. I don't think that's. A proper. Uh, word? Pitter patter? Is that some kind of voice? Voice make? Voice mate? Like sound, you know, of footsteps? There was only one set, so they realized before seeing who it belo belonged to that it was probably Canon, not Kraus and the rest. There are no one to be found. She didn't know uh, where they were, but they had to be somewhere on this island. They hadn't had a thing to eat since the previous site, so their stomach must have grown uh, about now. They will probably come plodding back of their own accord before long. By now, Natsuki was thoughtfully ex operated and started to feel that there was no reason for them to go out of their way and search. 
私はお客様方にお茶のご用意をしに厨房へ行きます二人とも早朝からご苦労様でした Natsuki left the parlor, acting as though the release intention had caused a new surge in her headache. Kanon tried to call her back, but Natsuki left swiftly. Ah. <laughs> Kanon sounded evasive. It looked as though he didn't know where, to, where they were, but had spotted something that might be connected to the disappearance. Even Hideyoshi noticed this exchange of words and came over. They were probably picked up on something strange in Kanon's behavior. Okay. Yeah, what do you mean? There was a typhoon, so it's probably destroyed. Kinda. Depends how how strong the typhoon was. Kanon hesitated once more. His tone wasn't at all what you would expect from usually fearless boy. Seeing this. Eva and Hideyoshi looked at each other uh, dubiously. What do you mean? Is there anyone in the room with the Nisans? No, I'm going to check it out. I'm going to take the key and go back to the room. I don't know. But I don't know. I don't know if I can find the Nisans. Where are the Nisans? Okay, what's wrong with the roses then? Kano dashed off to the servant room and returned with the key. Genji left the parlor, saying that he would go check, but then Iva and Hideyoshi followed after him. What was this something strange about the storehouse that had caused the usually fearless Kano to hesitate? It was still pouring outside, but perhaps the curiosity over the something that Kanon couldn't talk about won out. While the children made a big fuss uh, watching television, Kanon and the rest dashed over to the entrance. Okay. Uh, let me just check it like that. First of all, they are all okay, <laughs> despite of Typhoon. I mean, maybe that's not strange, because, you know, this is just rain and uh, and wind, so it shouldn't destroy the garden, but... Yeah! So that's not that. The Rose Garden Storehouse was a place that housed various tools used to manage the garden. It was definitely not a pretty building. Because of its appearance, it had been built so that it was hidden in the corner of the rose garden. Kanon, Genji, Iwa and Hideyoshi came cutting across the rose garden, holding umbrellas. They entered a small path just of the rose garden, which was normally off limits for those appreciating the garden and only used, the, used by those maintaining it. As they dashed down that the storehouse came into the view in front of them. Also, it kinda doesn't make sense to check the storehouse because it was closed. Servants have the key in the servant room, so there's no way that Kraus and others were inside. Unless there are several several keys and each servant have his own. So then that might have sense. What about garden? Why you are not showing us what the hell you meant? It was quite old shed uh, and compared to the flawlessly perfect beauty of the rose garden, it was pretty seedy looking. 
It was easy to understand why it had been built in a hard to see place. Even Hideyoshi arrived at the storehouse long after Kanon and Genji. You just have no condition. Yeah? Is it? Okay, before we go in, I assume that on the storehouse is... Well, we don't know yet what it was. I would assume blood on Natsuhi's door handle. Maybe there's like, maybe there's like, you know, that blood or whatever fluid that was on the door to the storehouse. Or maybe smirched somewhere in the garden. When Eva looked where Kano was pointing, she was at a loss of words. Noticing this, Hideyoshi also followed Kano's finger and, and was likewise too shocked to speak. The entrance to the storehouse was a kind of shutter and there everyone suddenly realized why Kano had been unable to find words to describe what they now saw. On the shutter, which was completely filthy from being exposed to wind and rain for so long. Stuck right on it. Um... Uh, okay? P um... I mean... Uh... Yeah? Like I said... Strange dark red liquid? But in form of the fucking summoning circle. What the hell is going on in this series? Um Okay. I'm kinda speechless. Muckles. Or maybe it was some sticky paint. An indescribably eerie shape was drawn on the shutter with some kind of ghastly substance. The rain had caused it to drip down like a fresh blood leaking from an open wound. No more beating around the bush. Some kind of mark was drawn there with a ghastly substance that looked like blood in a shape that seems to suggest something ominous. Two circles were drowned there, and inside them was a design that looked like a cross. Is there? Oh yeah, there is. There and there, it's like a cross, right. The four ends of the cross were wildly exaggerated, and it looked like some kind of crest from someone around Europe. And in the cracks between these shapes, written closely, packed together, were some unfamiliar characters or possible symbols. Yeah. Also, we know Kinzo studying dark magic. And there was someone else, right? Was it Shannon? Maybe? Let me know in the comments who was also who read like Grimoire's. I don't remember now. There was like in one of the previous episodes, uh, we had someone mention to read these books. I don't remember who it was though. I assume it was Shannon, but yeah. Oh no, wait, it was Maria, right? Because Maria, you know, this witches stuff and, and all of this. She had grimoire for herself and she read this. I don't remember. Yeah, that, that's not important now, but yeah, that, that was my fault because we saw like summoning dark magic stuff. What the fuck is that? 
one of those. Yeah, that's what I just said. It wasn't surprising that Hideyoshi would say that uh, about such a ghastly shape down with a red deep dipping substance. これ。雨が降り出す前にここに来ましたが、その時には何も。他の方々の目に触れる前に何とかしよう。ご覧になられたら、ご不快になられるだろう。そうね。ただの倉庫小屋とはいえ、こんな気持ち悪い落書きを一
Okay, I'm not going to conclusions yet, but... Did we just lose... Six characters? As Genji whispered something into Nanji air, Nanji went pale. He rose from sofa, trying to not be noticed by the children who were still engrossed by the TV. And the two of them rapidly left the parlor, muffing their footsteps. As they were about to exit the parlor, they came across Natsuki, who was pushing a servant cart loaded with a tea set. Ganji whispered something into Natsuki ear, and Natsuki went pale too, apparent shock. Then, leaving the servant cart where it was, the three of them dashed towards the entrance. Maybe they're not dead? Maybe they're just like unconscious? But yeah, we can't take this word for word as sacrifices. They might be unconscious. It doesn't necessarily mean they are dead. Also, those who remain shall tear apart those who are close. The two who are close. I... I know it's very early to make any assumptions. If we are talking about like, you know, during friendships and stuff. Then... Maybe it means Genji and Kinzo? Those who remain. So Eva, kids, Natsuhi. Apart, tear apart the those who are close. We know Kinzo and Genji are really, really good friends. So I assume their friendship is will be act basically gone. They will hate each other, or at least Kinzo will, or something after the second night that's my assumption for now but we'll have to like wait a little longer and see how the story will progress until night also yeah. George noticed them running down the rose garden through the window when Jessica and Maria saw that Eva, Hideyoshi and Nanjo were no longer in their seats and that the serving card had been abandoned in the entrance of the parlor, they also realized that something was matter. This is not going to be fun at all. For some reason, what Butler said sounded extremely indiscreet. But they couldn't deny that they were a little insecure and con concerned. About after seeing the adults run off into the rain without regards to their appearance. <laughs> Jessica and Easy Ward spoke for all of them. Watch TV. Watch TV. Tell that you're going to watch TV. Yes, thank you. At least Maria don't have to like see that. Whatever there is. Maria chan. And with that, I'm going to end this episode. Yeah, I guess I just don't want to mix too much uh, the two things we had, this mystery 
probably terrible thing that we can find inside. The beautiful thing we had on the beginning. So yeah. Also, I will record um, more videos in advance, probably on the weekend, because in the next week um, I'm not going to be able record videos day per day and talk with you uh, on the videos. So, yeah, weekend should be normal, but, you know, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the whole next week I will probably wait even longer I think oh oh yeah I'm going to have kind of Spartan um, you know environment in the uh, home so I don't know I will see how much I will be able to record in advance but maybe I will have to record some um, videos in some, I don't know, in some place I will find. Anyway, um, yeah, it will be way harder to record reactions than um, Umineko and uh, Shizuku, you know? Yeah, I think the most problems will be um, reactions. Well, anyway, this is like uh, still, um, I think, for the next week. So, yeah, I guess this episode was freaking damn amazing. And I can't wait what's going to be next. And I will be sure to make the episode and put the next episode also. Maybe not today, but probably tomorrow. So, yeah, that will be it. And... Thank you for watching, for your, like, attention. Uh, let me know in the comments what you think about this whole situation. What you thought about Kinzo. Uh, sudden change. I wouldn't say it's sudden, because we were, like, hinted kind of about that. But, yeah. Yeah, this is... This is really kind of roller coaster. This is great. And you're great as well. So, thank you. And I will see you in the next one. For now, Pocket Watch is going out.